Psalm 37, three to five. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. In this Psalm, David tells us how we are supposed to delight in the Lord. What does that mean? How are we to do that? Let's go on a scripture scouting report and find out. What does the word delight even mean? Simply put, it means to find joy and pleasure in something. We can find joy in all sorts of things. For many people, they find joy when they hang out with a close friend. Or maybe you find joy when you are playing with your favorite toy. Joy or delight is something that the Lord designed us to feel. People should take pleasure in the Lord. But the problem is that men's sinful nature causes them to take delight and pleasure in the wrong things and take the thing that God meant for good and twist it for evil. The Lord wants us to delight in Him. In this Psalm, David explains what that looks like. Let's take a deeper look. Trust in the Lord and do good. In verse three, David tells us to trust in the Lord and to do good. But what does that mean to trust in the Lord? How does trusting the Lord lead to doing good? To trust someone is to put your faith in them. Think of a person that you trust most in the world. If they told you to close your eyes and fall back into their arms, would you do it? That is a trust exercise that people do all the time because it is a perfect demonstration of what trust looks like. Your eyes are closed, so you can't see, but you have faith that the person is going to be there to catch you. In life, most of the time, we can't see where we're going, but we know that the Lord will always catch us. When life gets hard, it gets easy to forget the Lord and take things into your own hands. But trust, or faith, is trusting that the Lord is going to do what He says He's going to do. When Jesus resurrected, He showed Himself to the disciples, but Thomas was not there. And because he did not see, he did not believe. In John 20, 29, Jesus told Thomas, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. Dwell in the presence of the Lord. In the second part of verse 3, David said, Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Here in Oregon, we're about 7,000 miles away from the promised land where David was king. So how can we dwell in God's land? As Christians that are living in a new covenant, we have an advantage that they didn't have back in David's time. That is Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, washing them, making us holy. Because of that, the Holy Spirit can dwell inside of us all the time. So we get to always be in the presence of the Lord. Have you ever gone over to a friend's house and sit on their couch and just play video games and not even paying attention to each other? That is so silly. You shouldn't ignore your friend. But in the same way, we shouldn't be distracted by silly pleasures of this world and ignore the joy we can have in God. We should delight in the presence of the Lord. In verse five, David says to commit your way to the Lord. What does David mean when he says your way? When you ask someone which way they're going, you are asking them what direction they are heading. So when David says your way, he's talking about what direction are you going in? Are you going towards the Lord or away from the Lord? As Christians, it is important that we keep on getting closer to the Lord every day. We cannot stop because if we aren't going towards the Lord, then you're going away from Him. Our walks with the Lord are like being on a steep, icy hill. The Lord is at the top and we're always trying to get closer to Him. If we stop, then we will likely slide back to where we already were. We need to commit to the path that the Lord has set before us, and in doing so, we are delighting in Him. So, commit your way to the Lord and find your delight in Him.